I paid 150 US dollars for this early 1900s desktop library card catalog. I wondered if, while working on this project, I could somehow track down some of the history of this piece. So why are these now so expensive? And should some of these failing original finishes be preserved? Or should these pieces be refinished? The risk of refinishing this card catalog is possibly diminishing its value by a few hundred dollars. But the reward is much greater and that is to pour my heart into a project like this that I can proudly display, appreciate, and quite possibly use every day. When Exter reached out to sponsor this project, I knew this would finally be a good time to find a way to organize my watch, money, keys, phone, and other daily carry items. Exter is a company that provides a variety of quality wallets, card holders, and other accessories. I've been carrying my cards and money wrapped in a rubber band for a long time. Discovering Exter just made things so much easier. With the simple click of a button on this carbon fiber card holder, I now have access to all of my cards in one place, with additional storage on the backside for more cards. I also asked them to send me one of their aluminum card holders, but in a much softer color. You can also opt to purchase their ultra thin tracking card. This tracking card is compatible with all of their wallets and card holders, and when inserted, you can use a simple app to know where your wallet is at all times. This aluminum card holder is designed for an AirTag if you wish to track your items that way. Those wallets and card holders were gifted to other family members. For myself, I chose a more traditional leather wallet, but with the same card organization system. I'll link all these products in the video description, or you can check out partner.exter dot com forward slash mad city modern if you use the code mad city you'll get an additional discount on top of all the incredible holiday deals in 1876 melville dewey founded the library bureau his company provided furniture and many other supplies that a library would need in order to function. The company started on the east coast of the United States, and over the years, they would have factories in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Chicago, Illinois, New York, New York, and many other locations. Most notably, the Library Bureau provided supplies and furniture for many of the Andrew Carnegie funded libraries across the United States and other parts of the world. Carnegie libraries were libraries built using money donated by Scottish American businessman and philanthropist Andrew Carnegie. A total of 2,509 Carnegie libraries were built between 1883 and 1929. 1,689 of those libraries were built in the United States, while 660 were built in the United Kingdom and in Ireland 125 were built in Canada, and 25 others were built in other parts of the world. So then what connection could I possibly have with a library card catalog that's more than 100 years old? 63 of these Carnegie public libraries were built from 60 grants, totaling $1,047,762 from 1901, to 1915. In 1905, a grant of $20,000 was awarded to the city of Watertown, Wisconsin to build their public library, a library that I visited often when I was younger. This appears to be the original finish I chose to remove it because I plan to use this piece daily, and with the exposed wood in several areas from the failing finish, it's only a matter of time before destruction, irreversible destruction, is caused. Whether this was shellac or lacquer, it was difficult to remove with the carbide scraper, so I chose to skip right to sanding. With the sponge-like pad on this 3x4 surf prep power sander, I was able to remove the old finishes easily. 
This sander also enabled me to sand the edges and the detailed areas of this piece without damaging the profile. For the flat areas, I was able to remove the sponge-like pad and apply the standard sand net sandpaper cut from 5-inch sanding discs. I knew when I purchased this old card catalog that it was made from solid quarter sawn white oak, often referred to as tiger oak for obvious reasons. I've explained the details of these beautiful medullary rays in other videos. Here's an example of another piece with similar patterns. This is a giant white oak roll top desk that was used in the early 1900s in the Wisconsin State Capitol building. I purchased it along with the matching white oak file cabinet. That story can also be found on the channel. This project would likely be referred to as a refinishing project versus a full restoration. However, there were some minor repairs that were necessary, including these boards that have separated on the top of this piece. These may have separated due to humidity or extreme temperature changes, so gluing these may only be a temporary fix. However, I'll still make an attempt. These are some of the sanding tools that I find helpful for projects like this. For this card catalog, I'll start using 120 grit sandpaper and work my way all the way up to 220 grit. Sanding by hand with some of these tools should help eliminate some of the marks that may have been left behind by a power sander. Using these various sanding tools and techniques will hopefully prepare me to restore this larger card catalog here on the channel in the near future. Before computers, there was the card catalog system. To search for books within the library, you would find index cards in these drawers. You could search for books by titles, authors, or even subjects, and the cards would have reference numbers that would help you locate the books within the library. For most viewers, this process needs no explanation. It's possible that my generation that grew up in the 80s and 90s was the last generation to use this card catalog system. I remember using this system in my local public library. There are still some libraries that use this older system, but for the most part, computer searches are the most common. I chose an oil-based stain color that I thought would be close to the original finish. My goal with this stain was to highlight the medullary rays in the quarter sawn white oak, more so than even the original finish. 
When I wiped back the stain with the shop rag, I was very pleased with the results. I asked at the beginning of this video why pieces like this are so expensive at the moment, and the answer is simple. The demand is high and the supply is low. Many of these items end up in museums, and the only reason I was able to acquire the Capitol Building desk with the matching file cabinet is because those items were auctioned off for the public back in the 1960s. In most small town communities, like the one where I was raised, where there's 20 to 25,000 residents, there's only one public library, so the supply is low relative to the population. When restoring vintage mid-century furniture, I often find that the drawer pulls are only plated, making them difficult to polish without removing some of the plating. With quality antique furniture like this, furniture that's closer to 100 years old or older, it's more common to find that the hardware is solid brass. Polishing solid tarnished brass like this that at one point had been covered in lacquer is one of the most rewarding parts of the entire process. Due to the moisture in the air, exposed brass will tarnish quickly, so I'll polish these, then apply lacquer for brass. It's true that I talk about my own experiences in these videos, but make no mistake, these videos aren't about me at all. They are intended to show respect for past generations, for many of us, it was our parents or our grandparents who worked in these factories and built this furniture that has served us so well for many years. This old card catalog could have ended up in a collector's basement for the next 50 or 100 years. Best case scenario, some end up in museums where visitors are able to glance at them behind glass barricades for just a moment. My hope is that by creating this simple video, maybe 50 or 100,000 people across the world will see this historic library piece and maybe just for a moment smile while they reflect on their own memories. This project is just one of many that I hope to share with you on this journey. So I hope you'll consider joining me. My name is Barry and welcome to Mad City Modern. Goodbye for now.